All right, so look, auto ID actually um, ID the vehicle 2011. Yep. Now the VIN does not match because this computer is from another vehicle. So I don't know if we can rewrite the VIN on this particular model, but let's jump in here, do a full code scan again, see if the TCM came back online. Yep, there's the ECM. We got eight things unhooked. Um, probably six of those are the cut wires. Uh, let me do a full code scan, save that. Then we'll see if we can get this truck to run and go from there. Alright, so here's the code scan. We have <laughs> accelerator pedal position circuit, sensor 1, sensor 2, throttle position sensor, lock mode, ECM backup circuit, IET, battery sensor circuit. So those are probably all the cut wires. TCM is still offline, as you can see here. So let's clear DTC, see what comes back. Okay, six codes. So we should not be in lock mode anymore. Yep, one, two, three, four, five, six wires, six codes. So we have to restore that. And I, I think that's the next step. Just plug everything in, try it again, and then we'll figure out why the transmission's offline. Because it was online last night. Who knows? All right. Uh, Let's just quickly check the engine oil because because you have to. Yes, it's full. Uh, let's just knock out the uh, low hanging fruit here. Mass airflow sensor, we probably need that. Throttle bo Amazon throttle body, well we'll give it a shot. Give it a chance. It actually clips in. I'm just looking at other connectors. That's plugged in, that's plugged in. Oh, cam sensor, that might be important. Plug that in. Okay, that clips in. Fuse box. Sensor down there. These sensors are, looks like they're plugged in. We'll put our air pipe back on. Because why not? You kind of want to measure your airflow. Alright, let's uh, see what happens. on. Let me just uh, clear DTCs here. So three codes left. Accelerator pedal position circuit and throttle pedal position sensor switch A. Okay. Those are probably all the cut wires. Fine. Let's see if it starts up and runs. Okay. Start stall. Going to ECM. We're gonna have to fix those cut wires. There's no way this truck's even gonna run or move. But it's promising. And then I don't know if it'll move with the TCM disabled in like limp mode or something. EVAP system pressure sensor, battery current sensor, yes. APP throttle position. All right, let's let's fix some wires, people. All right, let's take an inventory of the cut wires. So on the top connector, we have one, two, three, four wires cut, and then on the bottom connector, two wires cut. There they are. So six wires total, and let's see what they are. So on connector one, the top one, we have pins. 47, 48, 49, and 68, this cluster right here. And it says ABCC2, ABCC, ABCC PD press, pressure. And 68 is ABCC PS pressure. So they do look like 5 volt reference sensors to different components. 5 volt reference supplies, rather. On connector 2, there are two pins, uh, two wires cut, pins 90 and 91. AVCC, AVCC2. So I'm guessing those are 5 volt reference supplies to 
stuff. Let's take a look at the wiring diagram where all these pins go. If they go to the throttle body and the accelerator pedal position sensor, then obviously no wonder we have those codes. And then we'll have to fix these up. But let me just check where these go. Okay, so looking at some wiring diagrams, I figured out where all of these 5 volt reference wires go. And for example, throttle body, you see there's two TPS sensors and 47 is our 5 volt reference for both TPS 1 and 2. So I did that for all of these cut wires. 48 is EVAP pressure sensor, 49 is AC pressure sensor, and the battery current sensor. This one right here, that's 49. 68 is the power steering pressure sensor. The 90, 91 are the um, APP1 and APP2. That's the accelerator pedal. So let's fix all these wires up. And, you know, what, or should we connect them one at a time and see if our 5 volt reference, you know, drops out or not? Well, we, we could easily um, just use a test light to see if any of them are shorted out. Why did the owner go to all this trouble? That's my question. Um, but, you know, I don't want to take the time to fix all these wires and then find out, hey, we have something shorted and have to cut it again or something. So we'll figure out how to do that efficiently. Okay, so step one, or step 11, whatever, I stripped back all the wires so we can actually test and then solder each one. Next test I want to do is ohmmeter, uh, just connect it to ground, and let's measure the resistance going downstream from the engine computer, see if any of these wires, the 5 volt wires, are shorted to ground. It's a quick easy check before we start soldering. So let's just go one by one. There's the first one. 9 mega ohms, fine. Next one, basically open circuit, it's fine. Next one, 12 mega ohms, fine. Now we can check our meter, make sure our ground is good by connecting to the engine block, making sure that's zero. Yes, that's fine. So we did one, two, three. Let's check number four. Open circuit, that's good. And last two. Going to the APP, open circuit, that's good. And open circuit, that's good. And I did plug in the APP that was also unplugged like everything else in this truck. And our meter ground is still fine. So now I feel confident in fixing all these wires. We need to solder six wires, plug in the engine computer, and see what happens. Alrighty, we got our TS100 all fired up. Shrink wrap is on the wires. So let's do these bottom two first. Solder wicked right in, perfect. And then we'll do the four on the top connector. All right, got a beautiful soldering job done. One, two, three, four, five, six wires soldered, shrink wrap, marine grade, waterproof. So let's reinstall the engine computer. Let's reinstall the battery. Clear out the codes and see what happens next. All right, moment of truth. Computer's reinstalled. Battery's reinstalled. Place your bets now. I don't know what to say. Seems to be pretty happy, huh? <laughs> Let's reconnect, scan for codes, clear them out. I really don't know what to say. Look at this. Engine computer has no codes. It's a miracle. Wow. 
That's neat. So I'm wondering if the TCM communication, if that's a scanner issue, but how did it talk to it yesterday? Well, let's let it finish up and uh, take this thing on a test drive, I guess. Alright, so the only code left in the entire truck right now is C1131 engine signal 2 in the ABS. I'm just going to clear that out. Okay. Not sure about the TCM. Let's uh, wash the window and at least take this truck. I mean, I want to see if it shifts the gears. <laughs> we'll take it with the scanner. But so far, I guess that's uh, pretty promising, huh? Starts and runs and runs pretty smoothly. No check engine light. There's the four wheel drive icon. If we switch to four wheel drive, that seems to work. Back to two wheel drive, that seems to work. Let's see, I'll put it in reverse, neutral, drive. It definitely goes in the gear. What more can you ask for? All right, now we have to get this truck ready for a road test that's been sitting for a year. All the tires were very low, so pump those up. Let's wash the window and the washer. It wasn't spraying on the window, it was spraying into the cowl because I guess rodents got in and chewed the hose in half. So let me replace just this little section here. We'll get the washer back online and take this beast for a rip. New washer hose installed. Yeah, I guess that's good enough. <laughs> oh, amazing. Let's, <laughs> let's rinse this thing off. So, I'm trying the launch name brand scanner, the X431 Pro 3S Plus version 2.0. And look, this one can talk to the TCM. So, the latest update on the Think Tool Pros, I think, really messed it up. I don't like the menus, all that stuff, and you can't revert back to the old one. So I, I hate it when they do that. There should be an option to go back to the previous version if you know if, if it works better. So let's see what's stored in the TCM. Let's clear out the DTCs. Okay, and I want to see if we can rewrite the VIN number, the VIN, in the engine computer to match this truck. Because in Maryland, they have to pass the OBD2, you know, emissions inspections, and if the computer VIN doesn't match the vehicle VIN, uh, they might fail you. This is part of the repair. So, I don't know if it's under work support, VIN registration. So let's input the VIN value. Let me uh, put that in and then we'll try to write it. All right, so here is the correct VIN. We'll hit confirm. So take a picture of this screen, the original VIN and the VIN of this truck, and then we'll hit execute. All right, here we go. Let's try it out. Done. That's it. <laughs> okay. Module information. Okay, so now I want to back out completely. Go back to the Nissan and see if it auto IDs the truck with the correct VIN. All right, so we'll hit automatically search. There it is. Perfect, confirmed. So it's really nice that Nissan lets you write a new VIN to an ECM, unlike Hyundai Kia, where you can't even use a used compu engine computer. You have to like buy a brand new one, which are usually discontinued or on back order. So it's nice when manufacturers let you reuse parts from other vehicles. It's really helping the environment. All right, beautiful. Clean bill of health. Looks like nine modules in a 2011. Hey, that's reasonable, okay. Correct VIN, cycle key. Fires right up, let's take it for a rip. All right, made it to the pavement, everything is looking great. 
Let's let the V8 sing. Oh, it's got some power. running out of one year old gas. Not complaining too much. <laughs> well, I didn't really expect that. I guess everything was fine, just needed to plug a whole bunch of stuff back in and re-solder some cut wires. Definitely no parts required. Charged up the battery, pumped up the tires, washed the windows, and we're back in business. So, you know, what's the what's the moral of the story here? Well, I mean, you can't knock the owner for trying to fix it himself. De you know, definitely can't do that. But the fact that he watched my videos and this happened tells me I might not be doing a good job of relating the message of no parts cannon. Don't <laughs> butcher stuff. <laughs> but, you know, don't break connectors. Don't do that. Um, I don't know what the original problem was. Maybe the original ECM was bad, but when the new one was plugged in, I guess it wasn't plugged in all the way because the connectors are all broken. And then you get into the rabbit hole of going online and looking for answers, but cutting all the 5 volt reference wires, that, I don't see why, why you would do that. You could just use an ohmmeter and see if anything's short at the ground. Not, don't really understand that logic. But thank you to the owner for bringing it over. That was the right thing to do. We got it back on the road in less than half a day. And he can get back to work doing his uh, construction business. And I'll reach out to ThinkTool for seeing what's going on with that update because the launch worked flawlessly. Everything's great. All the modules communicate. No warning lights. So we're good to go. Thanks all for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Well, bonus footage. So I gave the Think Tool one more chance, rebooted it, and it scanned everything. So TCM is online. So it must be a glitch with the Nissan software, which um, is made by launch, so probably not related to the scanner itself. Uh, the only code stored in the BCM is uh, TPMS codes because the TPMS light is flashing. It's missing a few sensors, we don't care about that. But otherwise, truck is ready to return to the customer. I'm sure the owner will be very pleased and surprised <laughs> that that was the issue. Um, but like I said, you know, if, you, if you're doing work, don't, don't be a gorilla under the hood. Just take your time, do everything carefully, don't break any plastic. Um, the pins are so small in those bulk connectors. Just gently undo the locking tab and take them off. Not, you know, not too hard to do. So we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.